uh, for this paper, I will take you a bit on the margins of the Celtic, the Latin area. Uh, also because I, I think that what uh, I think that what happens in margin nature, I find by a bit what happens also in the core. If you want to state it uh, that way. Um, Celtic issues are always the uh, topic in uh, Spanish archaeology uh, through mainly two uh, aspects. Uh, the presence in the Celtic Spanish group in central Spain, the Celtic variants, and the influences uh, of the uh, Celt, Celtic groups on the uh, Mediterranean and um, people of the Iberian Peninsula we used to call, we used to call Iberians uh, in Africa. I, I don't have the time to, to go into further details, details, but the construction of such categories as Iberian or Celtiberian involves notions coming from, coming from the ancient literature, uh, the epigraphy, the linguistics, and archaeology in a multi layer taxonomy. Uh, quite difficult, in my opinion, to clarify. I will not try to clarify it. I will not complicate the thing by stating what, uh, by uh, giving you a historiography about. Uh, or we used to think the influence between uh, the Iberian world towards southern France. Let's just say that until the last 20 years, the general opinion was that, obviously, the Gaelic Iberian culture received long range and strong influences uh, from uh, Latin world, while the Iberian culture uh, influenced the surrounding areas of, uh, of southern France, the so called uh, Ibero Andalusian. This point of view was, as far as I know, first discussed by uh, Jean Zanmarty uh, in his paper published in 1994. Uh, at this time, in France, complex Middle Latin practices involving human body remains, as well as weapons, were attracting a lot the attention of the scientific audience. The spectacular results of the excavation of uh, Rigaumont sur Arc and Gournay sur Arc began to be widely known, and weapons were the focus of a growing interest uh, with André Rappin and uh, Thierry Lejard's works on Gossels. Saint Martin's works, uh, Saint Martin showed that both weapons and warrior rituals, uh, already evidenced in gold, were parallel in uh, northeastern Spain. The presence of Latin type words in this region was long known. But Saint Martin's paper provided a synthesis, considering also the presence of scarce fragments of the material record in the same area, thus emphasizing the fact that parallels with the continental uh, Iron Age were not only to be sought in the material culture, strict sense, but also in the symbolic practices. The important the region, the most northeastern region of, uh, of the Iberian Peninsula. The important was particularly concerned through the excavation of Bridget and Andreu, Julia Strait. Later in the late, uh, late 90s, early, uh, early 2000s, through Carmen Rovira and Viviana Augustus' work, data from other settlements, Ilya de Narishag, also in Julia Strait, and Mas Castilla de Pontos, would confirm the fact that the important was a focal point for these practices. But still, the exhibition was observed more to the south in Puch Castilla. Nowadays, no doubt remains about the fact that these cuts were obtained through decapitation. There are several edits. And were exposed once carefully prepared with a, part, uh, with a good part of the soft tissue still conserved. Saint Martin's approach was later reinforced. By the work of weapon specialists, first Fernando Quesada and more recently Gustavo Garcia Jimenez. This work emphasizes a strong integration from the specific point of view of the weapon group of northeastern Spain with the Latin area. Garcia Jimenez demonstrated the existence of a local tradition of Latin words. These weapons, uh, the Latin, classical Latin, let's say. Uh, in your, at your left, and the, the Iberian Latin words on the right of the little uh, rectangle here. So, uh, these weapons were shorter than the continental counterparts. They are scattered 
was a great thing. And they didn't go, uh, didn't find any other way to, 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 to say it. So Napoleon's at uh, at uh, shaped mouse, uh, you can see for continental Latin words. <coughs> About the spell suspension system was identical with the one uh, we know for the continental world. Quite significantly, Latin words were not popular uh, in the Celtiberian world and in central Spain. Few, we have few examples of them, all of continental import. These, important, uh, these imported words were modified in order to fit with the pipe which uh, typical of the Hispanic equipment, uh, as shown in Tarando Pisano. The sheep remains found in Catalonia, among others, among the area, mainly raised, were also of a type really similar uh, to the continental one. Last but not least, Celt elements were found in Catalonia, why not in Central Spain? Much of the weapon I told you about were found <coughs> in the funerary context, in Emporias, for example, in Turo de los Pins or in La Pedrera de Vallfogona, apparently one of the older contexts. Some of these weapons, almost all these words, were displayed through the army or navy alongside the similar dead thus reinforcing the apparent convergence, the apparent convergence of the northern Iberian sphere with the Celtic world. You can see one of the recently found two or twelve uh, skulls in the uh, and de Gastret, and on the right, the drawing of a Latin world who uh, has been pierced to be uh, named on the front of the building. The convergence of these observations about weapon or symbolic practices, brought to the idea that the northeastern Iberians were submitted to strong Celtic influences. And this is the exact terminology used by most of the authors. Quite surprisingly, the northeastern Iberian, Iberians appeared closer to the Celt, to the Celts, than their Celtic and Celtic Iberian counterparts. This idea of what I know means self-evident, as Western Mediterranean archaeology used to define itself in opposition with the continental ones until the 1990s at least. But evidence found in southern France, in Le Caillard, or Le Genre, for example, supported the idea of the spreading of Celtic practices in the Western Mediterranean, Mediterranean areas, uh, contemporarily with the advances in uh, Catalonian archaeology. This trend of the investigation led to the beautiful exhibition at Gilblad called Rights and Men, the Rick and the Zone, in its French original version, and gave its background to another exhibition at El Yastret, Escartayas Yastret, but let's say well among them, as well, I think, uh, even if I can be sure because I didn't see it, as the one the exhibition held recently in Zagreb about the funeral world in the northern Iberian world. Yet, one said that there was Celtic influence in northern Iberia, some questions remain to be solved. Both terms sent back to wider idea, a supposed specifically Celtic, culturally Celtic practices linked with war, with war, involving fighting patterns as well as symbolic practices that would have been adopt adopted by Northern Iberians. This point deserves a discussion. I would like to first underline the fact that this point of view owes a lot to the specific construction of the archaeological knowledge of the Iron Age. That then those words are considered as specifically Celtic because they were first identified in Latin. What the first recover have been uh, found in uh, Emporias or in Baitrona, for example. On the other hand, the exhibition of several head is considered a typically Celtic because of the description of Posidonia transmitted to us through Strabo, which seems to correspond to an observation made in the vicinity of Massilia. What if Posidonians had made the same observation in the vicinity of Emporia and Strabo wrote it in book 3 and not in book 4? When we consider that both aspects are mainly Iberian and not uh, Celtic, for example. 
The fact is that Celtic astringitis are limited to the sphere of our environments. Epigraphy shows clearly that the local language was not killed, the local writing is there, the settlement patterns were seriously different than those of continental Europe, and funerary practices were different as well as those of craft, such as weather workers. And then if individuals coming from continental Europe may have well been present among the local communities, it is difficult to interpret the local Iron Age materiality as a byproduct of the continental world. In fact, if we look more closely to the symbolic practices, they weren't, in my opinion, really identical to the continental ones. I will be quick on that topic, as I already published in French, and only my point of view on this respect. First, the context, the general overall context, appears very specific. The, these symbolic practices seem to be concentrated around private, elite buildings, the surrounding area of the huge Zone 14. Uh, out of Puigdes Saint Andreu, and less spectacularly, but also perhaps more clearly, around the zone 15 buildings in the Italian nation. This compound, compound was interpreted by the, uh, the excavator of the Richard building, but I rather interpret it, along with other colleagues, as a huge aristocratic mention of the material record shows the arms of domestic activities. Mascaster de Pontos, comparable remnants were found in a slightly different context, as a building that doesn't belong to a airport, but is the center of a countryside <coughs> estate. One skull was found in the building of a silo outside of Puches and Tender, and in which Castellar another was found near the entrance of the hill fort. But this practice seems nonetheless overwhelmingly related with huge private buildings. In gold, symbolic practices involving weapons and all body parts are mainly to be found in collective buildings, in my opinion, sanctuary in Northern Gaul, or Tico, uh, within Ilford, in Antromont, or Occupertus, open space in the agglomeration in the Caille in the Caille. There is one possible exception, through the Montmartin, Mont was a sanctuary, it's an associated with an aristocratic residence. The nature, the ritual treatment <coughs> of the, of the swords seem also very different from one region to another. The northern Iberian world, world when the contexts are clear in us, only those words, uh, this world appears to have been exhibited. Why in Gaul, all kinds of weapons would be used in such a way? Apparently, in Iberia, exhibited swords remained in their scabbard, while they were permanently and chiseled uh, in Gaul, with scabbard and swords included separately. The ritual destruction sequence seems also different, with the destruction mainly through bending of the weapon after its display in gold in the Kaila, while bending or perforation of the weapons seems to have occurred before in Catalonia. The comparison of these weapons with those found in funerary context highlights these differences. In Catalonia, swords found in found in gray and sword display around five and building appear to have received a very treatment similar, a very similar treatment contrary to what we can observe in continental Gaul. My impression is that the Gaul ritual emphasizes the collective and communitarian identity of both the victors and their victims, while the Iberian seem to focus on segmentary identities. The vanquished, through the display of the severed head, is clearly and individually identified. The victor was identified through the division of his girl's spoils of his enemy on the other side of his house. I believe also, I won't explain why, but I, I can make my point later, that the swords are not the swords of the one vanquished, but the swords of the victors. Indeed, I want to explain that treatments are uh, very similar treatment than uh, the one we observe in the funerary record. Well, then, far away from the huge anonymous battlefield involving tens of thousands of fighters, which at the end of the first century at least characterized a military encounter between Rome and Gatha. We can explain this focus. What can explain this focus on individual identity in war? One part of the explanation lies in the specific structure of the northern and middle Iberian societies. As some of you know well, I think that these communities have to be interpreted as strongly competitive ones, within which individual and domestic specific, within which uh, within which individual and domestic unit specific values were emphasized 
and, uh, and capitalize. One of the means to capitalize all of them right, was uh, symbolic practices I just mentioned before. In this kind of situation, the horizon of war is not limited to inter-community conflicts, but extends also, and maybe preeminently, to the private war and to interlineage vendetta. Intra-communitarian conflicts between rival lineages can perfectly be imagined. And in my opinion, the symbolic practices known as settlements of northeastern Iberia uh, to be interpreted as a symbol of a strong social stress linked with highly competitive processes which couldn't be regulated by other means of armed violence and more than being the result of and, um, and much more than being the, the result of a sub-scale influence. Among the strategies of distinction of the Iberian light and the ages, the building of a complex network of friendship and alliances was, in my opinion, a crucial aspect. On the one hand, the broad prestige, and on the other hand, the great force one's strength. Partners may have been, in part, sought inside the community itself or among the surrounding communities. In my opinion, cross culture trade with Greek or Punic traders can also be uh, explained in this perspective. But what other partnership works out without any doubt much farther in continental and Atlantic Europe. The discovery in the 3rd century BC Elite warrior grave on the French southwest of two Iberian vessels in my, is, in my opinion, a clear proof of the existence of this kind of relation between the Iberian area and uh, the department, the northern department of the land. In my opinion, then, the common military culture shared on both sides of the Pyrenees can be the consequence of the fact that such networks also rely on the exchange of military help, bringing people from northern Iberia to fight alongside with aristocrats from Gaul, and vice versa. This would have been the consequence as a consequence. This would have had as a consequence a strong integration of military elite elites based in a common practice of fight and maybe also on a common military education. Today, isotopic studies reveal the extent of the individual mobility in late history. And I think the idea as outlined, outlined here provides a realistic frame, allowing understanding why the convergences between the northern Iberian and the continental material culture are almost limited to weapons. Military culture was indeed what we can call today a class culture shared by individuals inserted in networks of supra-regional extension. The existence of such warrior networks may also explain how Hannibal could raise so important contingents of warriors from Spain, Gaul, and Northern Italy. So, a reduced number of key persons through the network could gather an important number of warriors whose creation was guaranteed by mutual trust and identity for military ethics. One of the recurrent problems when dealing with archaeological interpretation is that we may easily think we have given an explanation why indeed we didn't. Talking about Celtic influences doesn't, in my opinion, explain much, as it reduces the complex process to some kind of core periphery uh, cultural relationship, the static that the core of late prehistoric Europe uh, was the Celtic culture. In my opinion, we have to consider the late prehistoric world as a much more uh, multidirectional network structure uh, one in which one collective identity culture exists obviously through language, belief, etc. But this culture isn't the only horizon of materiality. Materiality of a specific community depends also on its overall culture, depends obviously on its overall cultural sphere, but, beyond, uh, but also in the technical information available to it, and as far as concerned, on possible strategies of distinction of social groups whose connection transcend the cultural or linguistic boundaries. The risk of ignoring it can lead us to fall into the traps the ancient authors have set for us. In Polybius' description of the Punic battle order before the Cana, uh, before Battle of Cannae, the Northern Iberian do not appear to us as the one with the great sword, one with the uh, lion and tunic. Uh, impossible to, to, to say, yet some of them were probably there 
And uh, I think in this text, tell us that they couldn't be recognized by the mention of the same thing, that's a problem.